The Dog and His Reflection. Ralph is a dog. He is always hungry. His master is a very lazy man. He only feeds Ralph once a day. When will my master wake up? When will he feed me today? I'm really hungry right now. I can't wait any longer. I'll get some food by myself. Ralph goes out of the house. He walks and walks. He looks for food. He can't find any anywhere. Ralph also gets lost. I can't find any food, and now I am lost. I should have stayed at home. My master might be awake by now. I am so hungry. <laughs> Ralph is very tired and sits down to rest for a while. He hears music coming from a house. Hey, what's that sound? It's music. It's coming from that house. I'll get closer and take a look. Ralph looks inside the house through an open window. There are lots of people inside, and it is very noisy. They must be having a party. Oh, I see lots and lots of food inside, too. How can I get some food? Ralph tries to think of a way to get inside. Finally, he waits until no one is looking and quickly runs in. Everyone is singing and dancing and having fun. Look at all the happy people. Look at all the food. They are not even eating it. I hope I can just get a piece of meat. Someone please throw me some meat. Oh, please, please, please. Ralph closes his eyes and prays. He is so hungry. He is about to faint. Hey, look at that poor dog over there. He looks tired and hungry. Throw him something. You're right. What a poor dog. I'll throw him this piece of meat. Here, doggy, have this. It's very good. Ralph smells the meat and opens his eyes. Arf, arf. Oh, my goodness. It's a piece of meat. My prayers came true. I wonder who threw it to me. That's not important right now. I better just take this and run. Ralph quickly takes the meat and runs out of the house. Look at that dog run. He is really fast. I guess he was really hungry. Poor dog. Ralph is very excited. He wants to take the meat to a safe place and eat it there all by himself. He looks for a good place to eat. Over there looks like a good place. I better cross that bridge first. Ralph is crossing the bridge. He looks down into the water. Hey, who's that dog down there? He has a bigger piece of meat. What shall I do? I know. I'm a good swimmer. I'll jump into the water and take the meat away from him. Then I can eat two pieces of meat. Yoo-hoo! Today is my lucky day. Arf, arf, arf! Ralph jumps into the water. Whew! 
<laughs> Where did that other dog go? I can't find him anywhere. Ralph looks everywhere, but the other dog is gone. Oh, forget it. I'd better get out of the water. I might catch cold. Ralph gets out of the water and quickly shakes his whole body. That's strange. I wonder where the other dog went. But wait, where is my piece of meat? I had it when I jumped into the water. Now it's gone. Oh no, that's it. I dropped it when I went into the water. My meat is gone now. <laughs> As he is crying, Ralph sees another dog crying in the water, too. This time, Ralph sneezes, and the other dog sneezes, too. Actor! Hey, look! He sneezes just like me. He also cries just like me. Who is he? Let me look closer. Ralph looks closer into the water. He is surprised because he sees himself in the water. This can't be. It's just me. It's just my reflection in the water. <laughs> then the other dog was also just my own reflection? I can't believe it. I lost my piece of meat because of my reflection. Oh, how foolish I am. Today is my unlucky day. I am lost, and I am still hungry. What shall I do? <laughs> Moral. If you are too greedy, you may even lose what you have. Donkey in the Lion's Skin. A donkey is walking through the forest one day. He is feeling sad because the other animals always tease him. I look too weak. A lion looks very strong. I wish I were a lion. Then the other animals wouldn't tease me anymore. The donkey keeps talking to himself while walking. Then he steps on something. He stops to look. Oh my goodness! It's a lion! Please don't kill me, Mr. Lion. My meat is no good. I will be your slave. Please! Please, please, just this once, don't kill me. The donkey closes his eyes in fright and is shaking all over. But there is no answer from the lion. The donkey becomes curious and carefully opens his eyes. The lion is still there but it does not move at all. The donkey steps closer to the lion. Hey, it's just a lion's skin. Jeez, thank goodness. But who left it here? Oh, that's not important. Let me see. The donkey looks at the lion's skin carefully. 
It has a head, a body, legs, and a tail. It has everything. It even has paws and sharp teeth. It looks real. This is fantastic. I will try it on. The donkey puts on the lion's skin and goes to a nearby pond to look into the water. Wow! I look like a real lion. What can I do with this? Just then, a rabbit comes to the pond to drink water. He sees the donkey in the lion's skin. Eek! It's a lion! Run, run, run for your life! <laughs> the donkey sees the rabbit run away. It looks very funny. <laughs> the rabbit thinks I am a lion. <laughs> I've got a good idea. I will go around the forest and trick all of the other animals too. This is going to be so much fun. I can't wait. The donkey is very excited. He puts on the lion skin and walks around the forest. There is a goat. Let's see if it works again. I will go over to the goat. I will pat his shoulders. The donkey pats the goat on the shoulder. Yes? Who is it? Ah! It's a lion! Run, everyone! A lion is in our forest! Run! Run! <laughs> <laughs> it worked again! Look at the goat! Look at him run! He looks so silly. The donkey is very satisfied. He wants to have more fun. Who shall I scare this time? Aha! Uh -huh. There goes a pig. I will try it on him. Mm -hmm. what, 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 what? It's a lion! Everyone, run for your life! <laughs> this is fun. They are really scared of me. The donkey goes around the forest all day long, scaring all the animals there. Then he sees a fox taking a nap under a tree. There you are, fox. You tricked me many times. I don't like you. This time, I... We'll trick you. The donkey sneezes on purpose. Ouch! How is that? Be quiet. I am resting. Mm hmm. <laughs> The fox opens his eyes. A lion! Oh my goodness! Don't kill me, Mr. Lion! I will do anything for you. Please don't kill me! Oh, oh. The donkey opens the lion's mouth. The fox sees the sharp teeth inside and runs away quickly. Help! 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 <laughs> Look at the fox run. <laughs> I can't stop laughing. He looks so silly. The donkey fooled a lot of animals 
just by wearing the lion skin. But it is still not enough. Ah, uh, this is getting boring. How can I make them more scared? Aha, I got it. I'll roar like a lion. The donkey tries to roar like a lion, but it doesn't sound right. But the donkey thinks it sounds like a lion's roar. <laughs> Here come those silly animals again. I will make a lion's roar. They will be really scared this time. The rabbit, goat, pig, and fox appear. They are talking about the lion. Uh, I saw a lion today. It was so big and scary. <laughs> yes, I saw him too. It looked mean. It, I was so scared. I was almost caught. Hey, there comes the lion again. Let's run away. Run! Just as the animals are about to run away, the donkey roars. I am the king of all animals. I will eat all of you. The donkey keeps roaring, but it sounds like a donkey's cry. Hey, wait! That roar sounds strange. That doesn't sound like a lion's roar. <laughs> then who is it? I know. That's the donkey's cry. Just then, a strong wind blows, and the lion's skin blows off the donkey. Oh, no! What shall I do? Look! It's the donkey! Yes! It was the donkey in the lion's skin! He tricked us all! We were all fooled! Wait there, you donkey! We're going to... Please forgive me! All of the animals run after the donkey and give him a hard kick. The donkey regrets wearing the lion skin. Moral. Don't make a fool of yourself by pretending to be someone else. The Farmer and the Eagle The farmer is a very jolly and kind man. He is also diligent. He wakes up early every morning and goes to work smiling. Hmm. The air is so fresh this morning, and the sun is also so bright. It's a beautiful day. Look at those birds and flowers. I feel so happy. The farmer always sings while he works in his field. La 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 I'm finished for today. I better go home now. On his way home, the farmer hears a strange sound.
What is that sound? It sounds like a bird's cry. It must be in danger. I must go and help. The farmer follows the cry. Where is that cry coming from? Over here, sir. Please come quickly. Please help me. I am trapped. There you are. I found you at last. Poor bird. Are you okay? Please wait. I will get you out. Please hurry. My wings hurt. The farmer tries his best. He cuts the net with his knife. I'm almost done. There you are. The net is cut. You are free now. Fly away. The eagle is freed from the net, but he doesn't fly away. He is injured. Oh no. I can't move. My wings hurt. <laughs> Don't cry. What's the matter, Eagle? Are you hurt? Oh, your wings. Don't worry. I'll take care of you. You will fly again. Really? I can't believe it. You're not going to eat me? The farmer takes the eagle to his house. He takes good care of the eagle. You are getting better every day. You'll be able to fly soon. Eat this. It's very delicious. <laughs> you are a kind man. I will never forget your kindness. The eagle is almost well. But the farmer's neighbors hear about the eagle and tell the farmer to sell it. I hear you have an eagle. Why, yes. How did you know? What are you going to do with it? Let it go, of course. You must be kidding. Eagle meat is good medicine. You should eat it. No, no, no. Don't do that. Eagles are worth a lot of money. You should sell it and get a good price. That's right. Thanks for the advice, but I'm going to let it go. He must be crazy. The neighbors can't understand the farmer. They leave the house. A few days later, the eagle's wings are cured. Okay, eagle. Flap your wings. Try to fly a little. Yes, that's it. Very good. Now you can fly again. No, my wings don't hurt anymore. I can really fly again. Thank you, farmer. The eagle flies away. Look at it fly. What a beautiful bird. Weeks pass, and the farmer forgets about the eagle. The farmer is tired today and decides to take a nap. He lies down on the grass next to a big high wall. The eagle sees the farmer. Get up, farmer! Quickly! The eagle flaps his wings hard. The farmer hears it and wakes up. Oh, hello there, eagle. 
How have you been? Are your wings okay? But you look worried. What's wrong? I must warn him. What can I do? I know. Then suddenly, the eagle snatches the farmer's hat. Hey, give it back. What are you doing? Come back. <laughs> He's following me. That's good. It's safe over there. I'll drop the hat there. The eagle drops the farmer's hat far away from the wall. The farmer picks it up. Naughty eagle! Why did you do that? Suddenly, the old wall tumbles down. Oh my goodness! Look at that! I could have been hurt. Now I understand. Thanks, Eagle. You saved my life. You are the king of all birds. Goodbye. Moral. If you are kind to someone, he will someday repay you. The Farmer and His Sons Mr. Thompson has three sons, David, James, and Peter. He is a very diligent man. He works in his great fields all day. But his three sons are all very lazy. Mr. Thompson is always worried about them. David, can you help me in the field today? I need your help. I can't work alone. But father, it's too hot outside. I'm too tired today. Besides, I am the eldest. Ask James to help you. You are always tired, David. David lies down on his bed to rest. Mr. Thompson calls his second son, James. James, what are you doing now? I need your help in the field today. I can't work alone. I'm sorry, Father. I'm busy today. I'll help you tomorrow. Ask Peter. You are always busy, James. James pretends to be busy. Mr. Thompson calls Peter, his youngest son. Hey, Peter, are you busy now? Not really, Father. Are you going out somewhere today? No, Father. Why do you ask? Well, then, help me in the field. I need your help. I can't work alone. Peter makes up an excuse. I would like to help you, Father, but I am not feeling well today. I have a headache. Not again. The last time you had a stomach ache. Mr. Thompson goes out to the field alone in the hot sun. He works all day while his three sons do nothing. His neighbors see him. Look, dear, it's Mr. Thompson. He is working alone again. 
Where are all his three sons? Didn't you know, dear? They are the laziest boys in the world. They never work. Really? That's too bad. Poor Mr. Thompson. Mr. Thompson worked hard all his life. Finally, he gets very sick and cannot work anymore. He is about to die. What will happen to my three sons after I die? They will starve to death for sure. How can I change them? Mr. Thompson cannot stop worrying about his three sons, even in bed. He thinks and thinks. An idea comes to his mind. He calls his three sons. My dear sons, David, James, and Peter, I love you all, but I cannot live for long. So when I die... Take care of my grape fields for me. That's my last wish. But, Father, I'm not interested in grapes. I don't want to work under the sun all day, Father. I want to live in the city. I don't even like grapes, Father. The three sons keep complaining until Mr. Thompson tells them his secret. But the three of you must keep the field. I buried some treasure there. Find it, dig it out, and share it together. What, what did, did you say? The three sons cannot believe their ears. Did you say treasure? When did you bury it, Father? Are there lots of gold and silver pieces inside? Those things are not important. Then what, what is, is it? it? Where is it? Peter is right. Where is the treasure buried, Father? I'm sorry, my sons. It was so long ago. I do not remember. Just keep digging and you shall find it. Mr. Thompson dies a few days later. David, James, and Peter start digging for treasure the very next day. Look, dear, aren't they Mr. Thompson's boys? I think so, dear. But they have changed. They are working so hard today. I know. I can't believe my eyes. Mr. Thompson would be really happy. The three brothers dig and dig, but they cannot find any treasure. Where's the treasure? Perhaps there isn't any treasure. That can't be! Father must have buried it very deep. Let's dig deeper! Peter may be right. The three sons keep digging and working in the field for months. It is now fall. There is no treasure here! We dug up the whole field for nothing. But look, David and James, our field is filled with ripe grapes. You are right. Let's sell the grapes. The three brothers take the grapes to the market. Their grapes are the largest and sweetest among all the others. They become rich by selling the grapes. Now I know. Treasure is everywhere. Yes. If we work hard, we can always get it. So that's what Father was trying to tell us. 
Moral. Work hard and good fortune will always follow. The Monkey King. All the animals are gathered in the forest. There is going to be a dance contest to pick the king. Everyone gets a chance to dance. The best dancer will become the king. Who will be the judge? All of us, of course. We will pick the best dancer. That sounds interesting. I hope I get picked. I want to become the king. Not a chance. You're a terrible dancer. I saw you dance before. Forget it. Oh, yeah? Well, you'll be surprised. I have been practicing. Okay, we'll see about that later. Quiet, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody ready? Let's start then. Mr. Duck, you go first. Go ahead. Dance. Okay. Let's go. Mr. Duck dances to the disco. He shakes his bottom from left to right. It looks so funny. All the animals laugh. Look at Mr. Duck. Look at him dance. Oh, my, my. <laughs> what is he doing? It is so funny. I can't help laughing. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Duck. You did well. You may sit down now. Next is Mr. Turtle. Go ahead. The music is played, and Mr. Turtle starts to dance. The music is slow, just like Mr. Turtle. Mr. Turtle just moves back and forth. What is Mr. Turtle doing? It's too boring. He is no good. The music is too slow. It's no fun. Thank you, Mr. Turtle. You may go in now. Who's next? Oh, yes, Mr. Bear, it's your turn. Thank you, Mr. Fox. I'll try my best. Music, please! One, two, cha-cha-cha. Three, four, cha-cha-cha. All of the animals are surprised. Mr. Bear dances the cha-cha. It seems like Mr. Bear has been practicing a lot. Bravo, Mr. Bear. That was great. Next is Miss Rabbit. Give a big hand for Miss Rabbit. Everyone claps their hands. Miss Rabbit starts dancing to a cheery tune. Her dance is very cute. Thank you, Miss Rabbit. That was really cute. You were very good, Miss Rabbit. You'll win for sure. I don't think so, Mr. Bear. You were better. 
Our final dancer is Mr. Monkey. Okay, go ahead. Mr. Monkey dances to techno music. He is better than Miss Rabbit and Mr. Bear. He is the best dancer. Everyone picks Mr. Monkey. Gather around, everyone. A new king is born. Congratulations to Mr. Monkey. You are our new king. I knew it. I am the king. You must all obey me from now on. All the animals are shocked at Mr. Monkey's words. What's wrong with him? I don't know. He must be crazy. The Monkey King starts ordering the other animals around. Hey there, Bear. Get me something to eat. Rabbit, get me a drink. Turtle, fan me. Hey, Fox, wash my feet. Every day, the Monkey King becomes more and more haughty. The other animals finally can't take it anymore. Mr. Monkey wasn't like this before. He used to be nice and humble. He has changed. We should teach him a lesson. How do we do that? I have an idea. What is it? The animals hear Miss Rabbit's plan. They agree to go ahead with the plan. The next morning, Mr. Fox goes to the Monkey King. Monkey King, how are you today? Not bad. Are you busy right now? No, I'm not. Why? Well, I'll take you to a nice place. Really? Where is that? <laughs> it's a secret. But there's lots of delicious food there. Just follow me. All of the other animals are waiting for you. Well then, let's go. The Monkey King follows Mr. Fox to a cave. Where is the food? It's inside the cave, sir. You go inside first. Where is the food? Where is everyone? It's so dark in here. As soon as the Monkey King goes into the cave, the other animals cover the cave door with rocks. The cave is closed. The Monkey King is locked inside. Let me out! Let me out! Right now! No way, Mr. Monkey! You have been a bad king! We don't like you! But I am the king! Do as I say! Open the cave door! <laughs> Do it yourself! Farewell! No, don't go! Wait! I'll be a good king from now on! Please let me out! It's too late, Mr. Monkey. Moral. If you act haughty because of your position, no one will like you.